Sarah here and today is going to be a bit of an interesting one because I, well, I'm broke so I can't buy new books so this is not a book haul but recently I had to, I went into the boxes that I left behind here in Melbourne when I moved to Tassie and I rediscovered all of the books that I previously packed. So I thought I would show them in a haul type video, but explain why they're important to me, when I found them and when I got them. We're trying a new angle, we'll see if this works. Everything is slanted, you are balanced on a bunch of books. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it because I don't have anything better at the moment, I'm sorry. And I hope you can hear me okay. Because I swear I have a loud voice, but since this doesn't have a dedicated microphone, it comes out quieter than I would like. And like I said, I'm broke, so I can't get a shiny new camera. So I just hope you enjoyed this video. And it's going to be a bit nonsensical, but let's have some fun. Okay, now, like I said, I haven't been able to get new books, but I was able to get two, and I can't resist not showing them off. So I've got Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Hardback Ravenclaw Edition. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And they recently just released what the cover's going to look like for the Order of the Phoenix. My excitement knows no bounds. That is my favourite of all the Harry Potter books. And I'm just like, yes! Though I love the covers they've done for this. And something that's fun that you can do with this is on each one there is a beetle that you can try and find because it's a tiny spoiler but Rita Skeeter is an animagus who can turn into a beetle and we meet her in this and we fig and Hermione figures it out in this so there's a beetle in every single one which I think is a really fun detail um, and I will be getting the paperback version for this as well because I love both the hardback and paperbacks so, I will get that, but like I said, I'm broke at the moment, so that's having to wait. The other book I got is the illustrated version of A Clash of Kings. Now, this is a different illustration style to the one I got previously, that's why the cover does not match, because it's hard for me to resist temptation to buy books when they're physically there, and I wasn't sure if this had more or less paintings in it, because it... It is done differently, it's clearly the same person who did the previous ones, but it's done very differently because in the first book, each chapter comes with an illustration, normally in black. In this one, only a couple of chapters will come with their black illustration, black and white illustration, and then there are sections in the middle where you get the same illustration in colour. So there's three of these, and the illustration's just as beautiful as ever, and haunting. Like, I mean, look at this illustration of a direwolf. Whew. So, hopefully before this, I will have posted my book talk for A Game of Thrones. It's recorded, it's just waiting for me to post it and do a little bit of editing. Um... So this will be read either this weekend or next weekend. I haven't decided. I want to do more study. So I might try and fob this off till next weekend. Also, I'm trying to fob it off until my brother's finished reading the fourth book because at the rate I'm going, I will read a book a weekend. And which means in two weekends time, I will be up to the fourth book. And he hasn't finished it yet, so... I'm going to have to try and exercise patience, which is not one of my strong suits when it comes to books. Anyway, so those are the two books I managed to get. I do recommend getting the illustrated ones. And the third book illustration is coming out this year. And just pray with me that the sixth book in A Song of Ice and Fire does come out this year. Because I swear if we have to wait another year. <sighs> okay. So one of the books, the first books I found was this. It's the Good News Bible. And this, you can tell by the pages, 
was one of the very first Bibles I was ever given as a child. It comes with pictures in it and it just has enormous sentimental value because I remember having this since I was like four years old. I know you're probably a bit like, four years old and you got a full on thing like this? Well, my parents didn't want to cheapen the story with trying to shorten it, you know, make it into a storybook. They wanted me to know the real story. Or as real as it gets when things get lost in translation. So, I was given this. Okay, two other books I got. These are not official Robert Jordan books, but they kind of, I mean, not Robert Jordan, Rick Riordan books, but it's kind of like they are. So, Demigods and Monsters, it's new essays, and it's your favourite authors on Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. So it's a bunch of different authors' essays put together, and Tales of the Greek Heroes um, by Roger Lanson Green. And both of these have been have been introduced. Like the introduction is by Rick Riordan himself. So I got this when I wanted to know the original Greek fairy tales, and I enjoyed the essays that were in this. I found them quite fascinating. So one is. Dionysus, who let him run a summer camp by Ellen Steber, and that sort of thing. So I did find their take on it quite fascinating, and I was utterly obsessed with Rick Riordan, so I wanted to get anything I could to do with it, even if it wasn't really official. And then I have The Battle for Rondo, Hardback, by Emily Roddell. I have not read this. This is one of the few books I'll be showing you today that I have not read. That is because this is the third book in the trilogy. So I would need to read the other two first. And you can't find these in bookstores in Australia from what I see, which is curious because Emily Roger is an Australian author, but I'd have to order them online and I don't have the money to do that at the moment. So this was the wait until I do. The one thing I do know is I'm pretty confident this doesn't tie in with um, the world of Del Toro at all, the same way Rowan of Rin and the Three Doors series do. Okay. Then I have some manga. Now, I've explained before I'm not the biggest manga fan, but I did get volume one of Dragon Ball, which did not enjoy very much. And I got volume one of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist. And volume three of Yu-Gi-Oh! Something. Maybe it's just random Yu-Gi-Oh! It was very odd. That something called Capsule Monsters. It was very odd. But I really enjoyed this one, as you can probably tell by how beaten it is. I've read it a lot. I really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Maybe I'll continue that collection at some point, because I do like you here. Alright, I have Star Wars. The Star Wars trilogy. So, it's the original three movies that were made, so episodes four, five, and six, in uh, book form. I've not read it, but I have it. I see, I don't really like books based on films. So like, I remember owning the Finding Nemo book that was based on the film, but I never read it because the film is better in that sense, because the film came first. Okay, then I have two books by Frank E. Peretti. So it's door, The Door in the Dragon's Throat. But it, and Escape from the Island of Aquarius. These, uh, which series was this? It's the Cooper Kids Adventure Series. These are Christian books, because Frankie Peretti is a Christian author, and these were really, really good. I really enjoyed them. I wanted to continue with it. It was just it's extremely fascinating take and it's kind of like Indiana Jones in a sense because they go to these strange places and they're investigating so in this one 
they're in a desert somewhere and they have to go down this they have to go like down deep into this cave system well like it's more like a it's like a, like a well as in it goes straight down and at the bottom there's a mysterious red door and so they're trying to study the door and they end up working out that some of the forces of hell are behind the door and it should never be opened and I remember this one involved some really messed up islanders I think I don't remember too much um okay the next series I have to show you is another Christian series that I loved as a child and that is the Keystone Stable series by Marsha Hubler and so I've got book one The Trouble with Sky, book two A True Test of Sky, book three Trouble Times Two, book four Teamwork at Camp Tioga, book five The Winning Summer and book six Sky's Final Test. These were a great series of short books about a um, orphan girl who gets adopted, well, she gets taken in by a Christian foster family, and basically it's her last chance, and she's only 13, and before, if she doesn't do well in this one, she has to go to juvie, and it's about her finding faith and what a true family is like, and it's just, it's all, it's extremely good. I highly recommend this if you're looking for a middle grade Christian series. I highly recommend it. And it involves horses, which is always good. Okay, then I have a series that I'm honestly not sure why I'm going to keep. I could donate it quite happily, but I did spend effort collecting this. So. I have a Diary of a Wimpy Kid series, so not complete. And I don't care to complete it, so that shows you just how much I don't like this series. If I don't care to complete it, then I don't like it. So, I have The Wimpy Kid Movie Diary, How Greg Heffley Went to Hollywood, by Jeff Kinney. And this I actually did enjoy, I thought this was well done, and the movies make Greg 100% more likeable. Then I have Book 1, Diary of the Wimpy Kid. These are all by Jeff Kitty, and I have book two, I believe. No, this is book four. Now, I have book one, and then I have book four, Dog Days. Book five, The Ugly Truth. Book six, Cabin Fever. Book seven, The Third Wheel. Literally did not enjoy this series because as the books went on, I grew to hate the main character more and more. He's a horrible person. Like, he's not sadistic or anything, but he's very self-centered and his family is ridiculous. Because, like, honestly, I can't, some, in some ways I can't respect him for playing, being self-centered because at least someone should care about him. And then I have another series that I grew to hate the main character more and more. That is the Princess Diary series by Meg Cabot. Yes, I grew to hate Mia Thermopolis more and more. And not just her, her best friend was like the worst kind of best friend. Like the movies, again, they made this story into an amazing film. Because they change things. Okay, so I have book one, The Princess Diaries. Book two, Take Two. Book three, I think that's, yet yeah, Third Time Lucky. Book four, Mia Goes Four. Book five, Give Me Five. Book six, Successional. Book seven, Seventh Heaven, and book eight, After Eight. So I got pretty fucked, so there's ten books in this, and I did read up to book ten, because I kept hoping the main character would change, she never did it, and someday I'll do a video on books that I genuinely hate at some point. 
And this will definitely be on the list. No, not quite far up there as sort of mice and men. Okay, then I have one of Frank E. Peretti's adult novels, The Prophet. Um, because my parents loved that I really liked Frankie Peretti, but they wanted me to read some of his more adult books, so I got this for Christmas from them a couple of years ago. I haven't read it yet. And they also got me Amazing Grace by Eric Mattex, which I haven't read yet, because William Wilberforce is my personal hero. I think he is amazing. And for those of you who don't know who that is, that is the guy who is responsible for abolishing the slave trade. Like, America took a few more years to catch on, but he abolished it, at least in the UK, and he dedicated his whole life to doing it. So God had called him to do it, and he gave up his own health for it. He abolished it and then died three days later from ill health, because it took so much out of him to do it. But he did it. Respect. I mean, I wish he didn't have to abolish it in the first place, because it should never have happened in the first place, but here we are. Then I have 10,000 Reasons, Stories of Faith, Hope and Thankfulness, inspired by the Worship Anthem, by Matt Redman with Craig Borlas, which I have not read yet. It's another Christian book. Then I have The Fairy Tales from the Brothers Grimm. Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, introduced by Cornelia Fenunc. And I haven't read all of this yet, but I got pretty far. I got up to like, um, I can't remember where I got up to, but I got pretty far in it. And someday I will finish it. It does come with pictures. But, um, yeah, someday I will get further into it because I want to read all the original fairy tales because Disney changed a lot. Then I went through a dinosaur phase as a kid, doesn't everyone? But I at one point wanted to be a paleontologist for someone who, if you don't know what that means, it means someone who studies fossilized creatures. So I got dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures, a complete encyclopedia. So it literally has a complete encyclopedia of all of the dinosaurs that they found so far. I don't remember much, but I did, I did read it a fair bit because part of my obsession came from a TV show called um, Primeval. And whenever a dinosaur was mentioned in that, I would immediately go and look it up in here. And I'm keeping this because I really, really like it. It's genuinely fascinating. And as much as I know I do not have the patience to be a paleontologist anymore, I'm still going to keep that. And then I have another book I got for Christmas from my parents a couple of years back that is Heroes Who Changed the World. So these are all Christian heroes who changed the world. So you have David Livingstone, the missionary who discovered Africa. Mother Teresa, the woman who served the poorest of the poor. St. Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo, father of the church. Bonhoeffer, the pastor who followed Christ to the cross. Hudson Taylor, the missionary who won an, a nation by prayer. Francis of Assisi, one of my dad's personal favourite heroes. The man who gave up everything to follow Christ. Flo Nightingale, the lady with the lamp in battle. Martin Luther, another one of my dad's personal heroes. The German monk who changed the church. Martin Luther is responsible for the Reformation, the reason why we have an Anglican church, or more widely the Protestant church, and I am Anglican, so I'm very thankful to Martin Luther for that because I, do, uh, I have many disagreements with Catholics. Uh, William Carey, the shoemaker who pioneered modern missions, and Luther King Jr., the pastor who had a daring dream. If you don't know who Luther King Jr. is, I can't help you. It's Martin Luther King Jr., you know. I have a dream. If you don't know who he is, I, where have you been? Well, did you pay attention in her her history class, like, at all? Like, even a little bit? So they got me that, and I've read 
most of it, but not recently. I'm probably going to reread it soon because I like to remind myself of what happened. Because there's a saying I'm rather fond of. Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. And I will not be one of those who repeat the mistakes of the past. I refuse. But, yeah, don't worry, we're not even close to done yet. I found so many books. I was like, when I was pulling them out, it's like, I recognised all of them. But I was like, wow, I have a lot of books. <sighs> Get ready. Yeah, so they're all stacked up on top of my chest of drawers until I get in the bookcase and can put them on that. It's all a bit precarious. Okay, so the next books I'll show you, this is an Australian author, like Emily Rodder, kind of, and his name is John Marsden. I would be su very surprised if you haven't heard of it. Now, I'm showing these off because while they're not technically mine, they're my parents and they will be reclaiming them. They love John Marsden. I did find them. So we have John Marsden looking for trouble. John Marsden staying alive in year five. This is my favorite John Marsden book. This is so much fun. Like, <laughs> And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of the seven books in the Tomorrow When the War Began series, his most well-known series. So I'd be very surprised if you don't know the name John Marsden, but if you don't at least know Tomorrow When the War Began. So that is book one, and Tomorrow When the War Began is about a group of kids who go camping only when they come home to find out Australia has been invaded by an unknown Asian country. The Dead of Night, these may not be in order by the way, Burning for Revenge, The Night is for Hunting, The Third Day of the Frost, and Darkness Be My Friend. We do have book seven, but it's that one was in hardback and does not fit easily along with these, so it is not here. My parents have it in Tassie. So when they come up to visit with the car, they will be taking those back home with them, and I'm just gonna keep them safe until they do. All right. It's a very good series. I do recommend reading it, though it is very hard, because by the time you get to the end of it, not a lot of the characters are still alive. Alright, so this next series is The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. And I have book one, The Alchemist. Look at that, isn't that such a gorgeous book? And then I have book two, The Magician. Yes, I do not have all the books in the series, more's the pity. And I wish they'd all stayed with this edition. I mean, like, they kind of match, but you can see they're different sizes. And I will continue with on with it at some point, because I did really enjoy it. It's about these two kids who... Okay, I'm just going to read the blurb. It's very hard to explain. He holds the secret that can end the world. The truth. Nicolas Fumel was born in Paris on the 28th of September, 1330. Nearly 700 years later, he is acknowledged as the greatest alchemist of his day, and it is said he discovered the secret of eternal life. The records showed that he died in 1418, but his tomb is empty. The legend, Nicholas Fumel lives, but is only because he has been making the elixir of life for centuries. The secret of eternal life is hidden within a powerful book he protects, the Book of Abraham the Mage. In the wrong hands, it will destroy the world. That is exactly what Dr. John D. plans to do when he steals it. Humankind won't know what's happening until it's too late. And if, pro if the prophecy is right, Sophie and Josh Newman are the only ones with the power to save the world as we know it. Some legends are true. And Sophie and Josh are about to find themselves in the middle of the greatest legend of all time. So, yeah, it's very good. You'll like the characters, but... Yeah, like I said, I haven't gone past book two, so. Yeah, they're twins, though, which is always fun. Okay. Next book we have is The Time Trippers by Hamish Robertson. 
Now, if you've been on my channel, you know I don't like time travel. I don't. I think it's a stupid concept and that we should leave time where it should be. The only time I like time travel is in... Oh, my book's damaged. How did this happen? Um, sorry. It's like something's eating it. My poor book! Anyway, the only time I like time travel is in Doctor Who and the third Harry Potter book because they can only go back a couple of hours. That's part of the reason why I hate the Cursed Child. Anyway, time travel is used in this by the, the use of a magic carpet, but they do it in such a way that I enjoy it. The only other time I enjoy time travel is in fan fiction when they're fixing the mistake, so... Fan fiction that fix season 8 of Game of Thrones, or fix the Star Wars trilogy and make Anakin not so much of an idiot. Okay, so the word for this reads, when Dan and Sarah start to travel through time, they stumble across a codex hiding the secrets of the ancients, but when it's stolen, who can they trust in the village to help them? As they explore the secrets of Mistals, they have some extraordinary Avengers tripping through time, discovering that history is not always what it's supposed to be. The lessons they learn about life help them develop and grow, but will the angels help them win through, or will the dark side suck them in? Find out if you dare in the Time Trippers, the first in a series of two roller coaster thrillers. Two is a sequel. Well, I think we know what book I'm getting next. I'll have to reread this, so it's been a long time. The main thing I remember is that there were people around with the dinosaurs, it's just that the dinosaurs had venom, so the bones dissolved before they could fossilize. I know that doesn't make much sense, but apparently that's what happened to them. And I really enjoyed the book. I did not realize it was part of two. This is the Apple of Doom all over again. Anyway. Okay, the next series of books I have four books in the Animal Arc Classics series and these were given to me by my granny so they're very near and dear to me because she's since passed and I will pass them on to my children. So there's Pony in the Porch, Donkey on the Doorstep, Owl in the Office, look at the cute little bee, and Kittens in the Kitchen. For those of you who don't know what Animal Arc is about, it's about a girl named Mandy who's the daughter of two vets and she has various adventures with animals and her biggest dream is to be a vet. It's very good. Then I have two books from Pony Pals which is kind of like the baby version of the Saddle Club. I have the baby pony and the pony and the lost one and I only kept this one because it has a baby foal in it and I thought that was adorable. Well, foal is a baby. It's a redundant statement. And this one because they save a swan. The swan family, this idiot boys with arrows. Okay. I have Mapping the Night Skies and the Star Guide, both by Robin Carrot, because I actually own a um, telescope that my parents got me years ago. So I still have it. And I'll set it up someday. And I Geek Wisdom and Sacred Teachings of Nerd Culture, edited by Stephen H. Stigal. And so it just comes with a bunch of quotes that any geek worth their salt should know, and then expounding upon it to create, like, wisdom from it. So, um, I'm trying to find one of the ones that you might know. It's so like, elementary, my dear Watson, Sherlock Holmes, repeatedly. And then, no other quote so quickly puts poor Watson in the hot seat, does it? And it's really not fair. The general public perception of Watson as a bumbling oaf couldn't be further from the character who narrates Arthur Conan Doyle's stories, who's both a clever doctor in his own right and more socially perceptive than the genius with whom he keeps company. Then it goes further on, so I won't read the whole thing. Because we're already up to... 30 minutes. <laughs> Not even done yet. Okay. Next is a series of books. I read. And they're very good. Very heavy, but very good. So, 
the Dragons in Our Mitts series. And they are about, they're a Christian series, which may surprise you, but they're about uh, mainly once you get up to, okay, so the first four books are the Dragons in Our Mitts, and next for the Oracles of Fire, which is a sequel series, and then the first four is mainly about two characters, Billy and Bonnie. No, they're not siblings, and they're the children of dragons and humans, and then there's an order of knights trying to hunt them down and kill them, as well as the dragon parents, because they're against all things dragons. And there's Merlin and King Arthur, and Merlin was a prophet, not a wizard, so all of the things that he did was through the power of God, which I absolutely adored. And there was um, different dimensions, and it all got a bit confusing in Oracles of Fire. Because there was time travel in there, and different dimensions, and got a, yeah, like I said, it got very confusing. But the kids, Billy and Bonnie, are fabulous, and their powers are interesting. So Billy has two. He has kind of a danger sense. And then he can breathe fire, and he literally develops scales in his mouth. So that he doesn't burn his mouth off every time he breathes fire. And Bonnie has wings, which she hides in a camping backpack. Hence why she's, her nickname is Bonnie Backpack. And I'm not doing this series any justice, but it is so... Good and oh, the twists and turns. I just mm, I need to reread this and then I'll do book talks for it because this series does not get enough attention. Probably because it's a Christian series, and no one ever wants to read those because they don't want to get infected with Christian beliefs or whatever the logic is. Okay. Um. It's just some Christian stuff, you don't need to worry about that. Um, okay, so I found a childhood book of mine, which is Maisie in London. If you watch my book haul video, you know I love Maisie the Cat. So for me, it's always Maisie the Cat, not Maisie the Mouse. Um, Secret Girl's Business, this was a book that, well, it explains Secret Girl's Business to me. I found my original copy of 10 Things I Hate About Me by Randa Abdel Fattah which I'm actually happy about because I like this cover better. And then I got F Babysitter's Club, Friends Forever, Kirsty and the Kidnapper. I like the story in that, but I never read any of the other Babysitter Club's books. Then I have Holes by Lewis Satcher. This is a staple for most kids. The film was just as good as the book. Then I have two Captain Underpants. I have Captain Underpants and the Big Bad Battle of the Bionic Book Good Boy Part 1. The Knight of the Nasty Nostril Nuggets. Yes, this person clearly likes alliterations. And they're done, and it's done by Dave Plikey. And then I have part two, the, Re the Revenge of the Ridiculous Robo Boogers. Yeah, it got rather ridiculous to be honest. I only ever had those two and I don't think I'm missing out. And now they've made it into a cartoon or a movie and I'm like, did we really need to do this? Really? Okay. <laughs> then I have the Little Book of Prayer Experiments by the Reverend Kate Bottley. I think this might actually be my mum's. He Chose You by Max Zucato. I think it's also my mum's. Um, Crater by Homer Hickam. I not read this. I think this might have been my brother's once upon a time. And I just kept it because I thought it was cool. I have 101 cool magic tricks by a Glenn Singleton and I actually did attempt a couple of these. And I have How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh. I'm so pleased I found this again. I need to finish reading it. But yes, I've had to be a boss. Books of all my favorite YouTubers. Okay. Then I have 
Magical Worlds of Harry Potter, A Treasury of Myths and Legends and Fascinating Facts by David Colbert. This is not approved by J.K. Rowling. I think someone gave that to me thinking I'd like it. The first book in the Vampire Diaries series, The Awakening. I have The Five Love Languages, Singles Edition by Gary Chapman. This is another Christian series, a Christian book again, I think. This is a book from my childhood that I adore, and it's the book that introduced me to Robin, Robin Hood. That is Young Marin's Adventures in Sherwood Forest. So basically in this one, it's not Robin who saves the day. It's Marion, and she's only about 13 at the time. And then I have Starlighter by Brian Davis. I think someone gave it to me because it's about dragons, but I have not read it. I have Teen Talk, Girl Talk. This is another... Sharon Witt, and this is a Christian thing, trying to help you get through puberty. I actually did find it helpful. And A Praying Life by David Paulson. Uh, the Forwards by David Paulson. This is by Paul E. Miller. And again, I think this is one of my parents' books. Then I have Minecraft, the Complete Handbook Collection. So I have... Combat Handbook, The Redstone Handbook, The Beginner's Handbook, and The Construction Handbook. And these are probably a bit out of date because I don't I think they came out a while ago. But they're still good. I had a friend gave them to me, so I'm keeping them. I have Doctor Who. 12 Doctors, 12 Stories by a bunch of different authors and my best friend gave this to me for Christmas. Not finished it yet. I have Classics Devotional Bible with daily readings from men and women whose faith influenced the world. New International Version. Yes, one of the comments I made when I rediscovered all my books is I found all my Bibles again. Because if there's one thing that happens when you're a Christian, you get a lot of Bibles. Okay, then I have the How to Train Your Dragon series in books, the series that the films were based on, but not really. Okay, it's, they're very good, but I only got up to book six. Why is book four on top? I only got up to um, book six, because... It's an expensive habit when there's like 12 books in the series and each book costs about $20. But I have um, an incomplete book of dragons and these are all by Christia Cow. I do recommend reading them if you enjoy metal grade series, but do not expect them to be anything like the movie. They are not. Okay, then there's the original How to Train Your Dragon. Followed by How to Be a Pirate. Which is followed by... How to Speak Dragonese, which is the language of dragons. Which is followed by How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse. Which is followed by How to Twist a Dragon's Tail. Which is followed by A Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons. So, like I said, they are very, very good, but nothing like the movie. It's like, this is one of the few instances where I'll say the movie is better. But that's because it is completely different to the books. Like, in the books, everyone has a dragon, and it's a rite of passage for young Vikings to go and get your own dragon. There's none of this, kill dragon, kill dragons, mentality. They all have dragons. And Vikings are very interesting rules in those books, one of which is yelling equals authority. Apparently. Um... I have another Bible, it's the Holy Bible, and this was my grandmother's, my grandma's. So it is very precious to me because it was hers. I, <laughs> you can, I got this from, um, to school. It's the Australian Pocket, the Future of Australian English Oxford Dictionary, the sixth edition. Yes, I have a dictionary. But, you know, 
And then the night might need a dictionary. I have Frank E. Pretty's Piercing the Darkness, which I think my parents got for me in a book sale, along with Manassi, the comeback. I got no idea what that is. It's some sort of Christian thing. And I have two more dragon books because clearly I love dragons. But I've not read this. These are by Anne McCaffrey. Dragon Flight and Dragon Quest. I don't know which is first. But I know my parents got these for me. The final books I rediscovered was my Twilight series. Yes, I've read the entirety of Twilight. Breaking Dawn was my favourite, and I always hated New Moon. Now, the only one I bought myself was the very first Twilight book. My dad bought the rest of them because he actually really enjoyed them. And he got all the films. So, yes, I've seen all of the films and read all of the books, except for Life and Death, which I actually want to read, because I think it'd be an interesting thing to do. But I do not own it yet. And that is all of the books, except for maybe one more. Yeah. Another Bible. <laughs> Be still and know that I am with you. That is Psalm 46 verse 10 and is my NIV study Bible with colour on every page, apparently. Oh, wow, there really is. Look. It's all maps. I should really go through this at some point. Yeah, but like I said, when <laughs> you are a Christian, you get given a lot of Bibles, you buy a lot of Bibles, so you get a lot of Bibles. So in total, I probably have about six. So at some point, I'm going to do a video where it talks about the books that defined my childhood and the Bible will definitely be on it because it definitely defined my childhood. Okay, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this rather random video. It was very long in the end, over 40 minutes, <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I've just got to get them all back together now. <laughs> all right, thanks guys for watching. Um, Comment below which books you found the most interesting, or if there's any there you'd like me to do a video on, and I will do my best. And what kind of video you'd like in the future, so like, leave a comment, maybe subscribe, and my last video will be here. Okay, talk to you next time guys. Bye!